Hi everybody, uh, I want to talk a little bit about bisque firing today. I'm doing a bisque firing, I've loaded all of my work into the kiln just now, and I want to talk about a couple of the things that I considered when doing that. So first of all, this is a bisque firing, so work can touch without any issue as long as it's not going to wedge itself within each other. For example, I wouldn't stack tumblers inside each other because they might um, not be able to come apart anymore when you unload the kiln. You know, they expand and contract and kind of like permanently wedge each other. But something like this, like putting this vase on top of this other um, dish, which is on top of a um, utensil holder, like a kitchen utensil, utensil holder, is fine. Also, in a bisque firing, this overhang here, hanging the piece over the shelf, not so big of an issue. Um, I would never do that during a glaze firing. Similarly, I would never stack these lids upright during a glaze firing, but they won't deform at all during a bisque firing. Um, they'll be just fine hanging out right there um, where they are. I will, however, probably move them in a little bit so that they're not um, in the flame path over there. Um, again, differential heating can cause issues in quartz inversion, and so I don't want it to get blasted um, on one side of the lid and not on the other. So. Yeah, in bisque firing, you can stack things. This is called tumble stacking, where I've just fully filled the kiln um, without using any shelves. If I'm doing smaller items, I'll oftentimes use some shelves, but still stack things in between. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what I have to say with regard to that. Um, I could fill this kiln up a lot more, but this is kind of all I have right now. I did a bisque firing a little while ago, so most of most of my work fit in there. So I'll just give a little quick tour of the kiln. This kiln um, operates off of just really cheap weed burners. Um, and I'm able to get to cone 10 in this kiln with those weed burners. So here I've got one burner that comes through this bag wall and makes a spiral this way. And this burner feeds in on the opposite side of the kiln here and contributes to the same flame pattern and so it's an updraft kiln and closing the lid now you can see the exhaust hole the chimney is in the top center so I will put some cones in this kiln I'm going to fire I'm going to bisque fire to cone 08 and then I will get started and I'll show you how I how I do that all right folks so I've closed the lid and it's very very hard to see in fact you might not be able to see it at all but there's a cone down in there, um, close to the top, but also in an area where it will still more or less accurately indicate what temperature I've reached. Um, this is my little setup for the damper. I put these four bricks on top and then a kiln shelf. I raise the flue just a little bit because I find it helps achieve a more even heat. I've lit the burners and they're just, it's really, really hard to see, but there is a flame there. Um, and it's just really, really, really lightly candling right now. Um, I'll probably leave it like this for a half an hour or so, just to dry out the moisture in any of the work, although they've been drying for a long time. And then I'll turn up the regulator on the propane tank, just a smidge. Um, I don't use a pyrometer, especially not for bisque firing. I'm just going to hang out for a little while, let it candle, and then I'll start turning it up slowly. So I'm just checking in on the kiln here. Um, it's about an hour and 15 minutes or so into the firing. Um, I'm still on a very, very low gas setting. I've turned it up maybe three times now. Um, and just by kind of feeling the chimney, if I hold my hand there for a second, it gets too hot to hold. So I'd say we're at about 250 degrees, 300 degrees in there maybe. So now, like about oven temperature. So now, water boils at 212 degrees at sea level, um, and it's important to keep the kiln at a low enough temperature so that any water that's in the clay doesn't boil, um, but rather just evaporates before you ramp up the kiln more quickly. Since we're at this temperature right now, I think we're not quite out of the woods yet, so I'm just going to let it hang out. Um, and just continue to climb really, really slowly. That's just kind of my standard practice, is to just play it safe, maybe enter what about 400 degrees, and then I can start turning up a little bit more each time. 
Um, but then, once we get to 900 degrees, that's the point at which chemical water starts to uh, come out of the clay, and so we have to slow down again through the 900 to 1200 degree range. Quartz inversion happens in that range as well. So we'll get to go just a little quicker until about 800 degrees, 900 degrees or so, and then I'll start slowing back down again. After 12 or 1300, the um, kiln will start to get some color, glow a little red on the inside, and uh, that's how we kind of know that we're pretty much home free. All right, everybody, it's about five or six hours uh, into the firing, and we've just reached the point where the kiln has started to have some color, like a dark cherry red. And so this means that we're past quartz inversion and we're past the chemical water stage of the firing. So I'm pretty much home free and I can just turn this kiln up um, uh, pretty rapidly now until the finish point. It's been pretty slow until here. So I'm gonna walk over to my propane tank here and we're just gonna give it a, a good tweak like that and we'll, we'll be done in no time. So just another mention here, one of the things that I'm doing periodically throughout the firing is I'm kind of holding my hand over the flue without burning myself, of course. And um, over here, I'm holding my hand over the burner point port to make sure that there isn't any um, heat escaping, that there isn't too much back pressure in the kiln, because if this damper is closed too far, and I'm pushing more air and fuel into the kiln than can come out the chimney, um, I'll put the kiln into reduction and I'll get an inefficient burn. So, if there's anything I don't want to do during a uh, bisque firing, I don't want to reduce. So I'm also periodically smelling the exhaust gases, um, and I'm, I'm looking for kind of a petroleum or a sooty smell. If that smell is present, there's too much gas going into the kiln, or the damper is too far closed and I need to nudge it open. Um, so far, I haven't been reducing at all. Uh, towards the very end of the bisque firing, there'll be a, f a small flame that might appear out of this chimney, and I will continue to open the damper until that flame goes away to keep the kiln out of reduction and maybe just maintain a very, very small little shimmer of a flame. Uh, the reason you don't want to reduce in a bisque firing is because you want to keep any carbon deposits out of the clay, um, especially the organic matter that's naturally present in the clay. You want to make sure that there's enough oxygen present to be able to burn that out. Alrighty, so I'm just looking down into the chimney there. And you can just barely see the cone starting to fall. It's about right there. Um, looks like we've about reached temperature, so I'm going to shut this off and um, block off all the burner ports and turn off the propane tank, and that's it for bisque firing. Bye, everybody.